And now it's unclear what all this is going to mean for Governor Christie's legacy, but a new book takes a close look at all, repeat, all of his predecessors, all the way back to Philip Carteret in 1665. It's entitled The Governors of New Jersey, Biographical Essays, and joining us, one of its editors, Michael Berkner. It's good of you to join us, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, when, you, when you take a look at this position, which has been called the most powerful governor's job in the country, do the, do the people who occupy that position frequently live up to that kind of billing? Well, of course they don't. <laughs> uh, Mike, it's good to be here, and it's good to talk about the governors. The, the response to your question is, is that you have in any long skein of history the good, the bad, and the pretty awful. And New Jersey fits the bill as I think Pennsylvania, New York, or any other state would. So we, we have a, quite a range in terms of our governors. Is there, historically speaking, an arc or a trend that uh, takes us through periods of, of good versus bad governors? I would say not really. I would say that human nature being what it is and, and uh, power being what it is, it really doesn't matter what area you're in. The difference is the constitutional arrangements uh, provide different opportunities for governors to exercise power. So the last uh, 50 or more years of New Jersey history has had a much more powerful governor. We didn't have a powerful governor until the Constitution of 1947, and that has made a big difference. Talk to me about this modern era and the people who have occupied these positions, uh, have they by and large been successful at achieving what they set out to do? I think this is where New Jersey stands out, Mike. Uh, New Jersey had very weak governors in the colonial period, in the revolutionary period, uh, and right up really through the, the 20th century until you get to Woodrow Wilson, with a very few exceptions. But since 1947, we've had more strong and successful governors than not. Uh, New Jersey's been very fortunate on both sides, Republican and Democrat, in having governors who've advanced this state uh, and made it a better place. Naming some names, Brendan well, Byrne, for instance. Uh, but yeah. We just we well, just had uh, his 90th birthday, and he seems to be as involved as he possibly can be. Uh, talk to me about Governor Byrne. Well, Governor Byrne is a really interesting story. I think. Let's, let's say at the front that he was one of the strongest governors New Jersey's had uh, and certainly uh, did so much, along with Richard Hughes and Alfred Driscoll, in terms of making New Jersey a, a modern state. Uh, and he did it uphill, if you will, because he had to deal with the fact that we had a deficit in terms of uh, revenue. Uh, he had to fight really hard uh, to get an income tax pass, which would enable him to do some of the things he wanted to do, and some of the things he did with executive orders, such as the Pinelands, uh, until he could get legislation through. Uh, he was involved, of course, with the Meadowlands. He was involved with higher education. Uh, he really did a lot to make New Jersey a more progressive state. Then we go to Republican. We have Governor Kane. Then we have Governor Florio. Then we have Governor Whitman. The state seems to like to go back and forth. We hear about this bipartisan nature of New Jersey. Does the governor's post kind of amplify that? I think that's true. And I think it's a, it's a symptom that, that New Jersey is not completely a blue state. Uh, in the 19th century, it swung back and forth between Republicans and Democrats in the latter part of the century, Whigs and Democrats in the earlier part of the century. Uh, today, it is still up for grabs. And we've seen this in the fact that you have a Republican governor in what is considered to be a, a blue state. It comes after interrupted terms as well. McGreevy obviously running to some political problems and coming back now in a reinvented version of himself. And Governor Corzine, uh, is, of course, is the last one profiled in this book. Uh, One-term governor who both had political problems and then went on to uh, misfortune as well, tragically within his own family and uh, within his own career. Yeah, that's true. And it would seem the, the first draft on, on Corzine is not particularly favorable to his governorship. Uh, he had some good ideas. He did accomplish some things. Uh, but basically, the voters decided they didn't like what they had, and they got rid of him, and they, they elected Chris Christie. Uh, Corzine really was never comfortable in the Senate, and I don't think he was ever comfortable as governor either. And this Governor Christie, whose legacy obviously is still a work in progress, from his first term, how would you think history would have viewed him? And from what we know so far into the second term, what will that do to what he leaves behind? That's a very good question, and it actually relates to how we made decisions about uh, pursuing this book. If we had uh, pursued writing about Christie for the book that you have in your hand, 
uh, we would have gotten a very different perspective on Christie than we have now since the book was published or since it was actually put to bed last fall because of the developing story that you've been covering on your network. Uh, there are certain things about Chris Christie, I think, that are, that are clear regardless of the recent news, and that is that he's a strong governor, that he's accomplished a good deal, certainly in his first term as governor. He, he had quite a legislative legacy of success. Uh, and that he's a personality who is, is really outsized for the state of New Jersey because people are interested in Chris Christie well beyond New Jersey. That is an unusual part of his governorship because relatively few New Jersey governors have made waves nationally. Woodrow Wilson certainly did, but not too many others have. Professor Berkner, I have to leave it there. Fascinating reading and an enjoyable conversation. Thank you, sir. Thank you.